dünyanın süsü olan, dünyanın ihtişamı olan, dünyaya kalite getiren, anlam getiren varlıkların 2015 yılına daha hala kadın haklarından bahsedilmesi çok korkunç. Böyle bir durum zaten hiç olmaması lazım. Baskı. Ve o baskının sonucunda cilt sağlıkları bozuluyor, saçlarının güzelliği bozuluyor, vücutları bozuluyor, neşeleri kalmıyor, sevinçleri kalmıyor. E, adeta güzellikleri tamamen toprak olmuş oluyor, yok olmuş oluyor. Istanbul, Turkey's biggest city and also home to Adnan Oktar, the world's most famous, if not only Muslim creationist. His group of followers is called The Kittens. Even though they're a religious group, they have their own TV channel and show where they talk about everything from religion, politics, to Kim Kardashian. I've actually been invited onto their show, so I'm going to head over to their studios to find out more about Adnan Oktar and his group of kittens. But before the show, I wanted to learn more about their group, which has dozens of websites that advertise their message. So these are all videos of Mr. Oktar giving kind of speeches to his followers. And this first video is called Excerpts from Conversations. To men who meddle in women's affairs, would you like women to meddle in your affairs? Our religion has given women an authority, a maternal authority. I used to kiss the bottom of my mother's foot and say, here I find the smell of paradise. That is really intense. So then he goes on to say, now that in a sense, women are more and more superior. They are superior in compassion, mercy, cleaning, punctuality, meticulousness, and thinking about details. It seems like his views kind of oscillate between two different things. On one hand, he's like, kiss the bottom of your mother's feet. But then on the other hand, he's saying, the superiority of women is actually in uh, meticulousness and cleaning. Adnan Oktar came on the scene in the late 70s and 80s when he began a religious group based on a grab bag of creationism, the evils of Darwinism, and Islam. Soon after, his fans, many of whom were from Istanbul's wealthiest families, started to follow him, and Oktar's congregation went from being a religious group to something that resembles a cult. His kittens, who bear a striking resemblance to each other with their plastic look and fondness of bleach blonde hair, look closer to LA reality stars and religious devotees. A lot of people think Muslim women only wear hat to toe veil. But in Turkey, a majority Muslim country, there's a wide range of fashion. With the kittens, who sit at one extreme, I wanted to see what Turkish people thought of Oktar and the kittens. Adnan Oktar? Ya duyduk da şeyimiz yok. Herhangi bir bilgimiz yok adamın için. Yani öyle kadınlar, kızlar karışık bir durum ya. Yani. Dini bir işlerle bir alakası yok diye düşünüyorum. Olive Arkelet, a prominent Muslim feminist, doesn't think looks have as much to do with Islam as people say, especially for women. Şimdi ben tekrar altını çizmek istiyorum. Yani e, giyimine bakarak insanlar Müslümandır yahut değildir diyemeyiz. Vermem. Yani vermemek daha doğrudur. Ama şunu biliyorum. Yani buradaki problem onların Müslüman olup olmaması değil. Buradaki problem onların hani kadınlara neyi yaptıkları ya da neyi reva gördükleriyle alakalı bir şey diyoruz. Ve bu eşitliği de öncelikle kadının erkek tarafından cinsel bir obje olmaktan çıkarılmasıyla mümkün olacağına inanıyoruz. Armed with some background knowledge on Oktar and a dash of Muslim feminism, I was ready to meet the kittens. Were they simply sexual objects or something more? So we're on our way to Adnan Oktar Studios called A9 Studios. Um, but instead of driving straight there, we're actually meeting one of their followers, and he's going to guide us directly to his place. I'm not quite sure why, and they're being kind of cagey about it. It might be because they don't want us to know the exact location of their studio. Um, but either way, I know that it's a big compound, and uh, that's where Adnan Oktar lives with a lot of his kittens. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Meher, nice to meet you. Hey, Now we are going to the uh, studio. Okay. Then we will meet some of our friends. Okay. And then you will see. Okay. Ben takip ediyorsun That was ominous. He smelled nice. He, it still smells like him in the car. So this looks like a proper estate. 
our cameras can film here? No. No? Okay. No. So we should wait, I can guess? I? Okay. Because of the security reasons. Right away, our cameras were clearly making them uncomfortable. Hello. Hello. I spoke to Sarah. She said it was. She said if we're not in the studios, we could film. As the policy, uh, we want to record with our camera, yeah. and we will supply with all the recordings. Okay. Is that okay? Can we see the Onu biz daha sonra edit ediyor arkadaşlarımız. This is an editing. Ya bu ne olan yani? After a long back and forth, the only place I could speak openly was in the bathroom on a phone camera. So we've been told that we can't use our own cameras even though I discussed beforehand to let our cameras shoot here. Seems like we have some sort of policy where we can only use their kind of shitty cameras. They're going to edit it and give it back to us. So clearly they're really worried about their image, but we're going to play ball, see what they're going to do. Hello. Hi. My name is Oktar Babuna. Nice to meet you. Very welcome. Hi. This is Mr. Adam Oktar's studio house. Great. Oh my gosh. This is like MTV Cribs. I got so caught up in the luxury, I forgot that this is the home of Islamic creationism. Oh, this is gorgeous. So what's uh, this stuff? Well, here uh, you see some paleontological uh, evidences uh, to uh, show that the uh, species did not evolve each other. Okay. And these appear all of a sudden, the species. These are real fossils, as you see over here. For example, you see a seahorse five million years old here. And then you see the picture of the seahorse, you see they are no different. Yeah. Which means there is no difference, mean no evolution, of course. We're waiting on them to finish Ramadan prayers, and they're going to come mind us during dinner, too. And then at 11 o'clock, I'm going to go on a show. I'm not sure what they're hiding, because actually, like, when the cameras are off, everything seems pretty benign. There's only one kitten who we've seen so far. The rest have been corralled away until we see the show. It feels a bit like I'm in North Korea because everybody's smiling and everybody's into showing me how luxe the life is. Um, but they are not letting us film anything at all with our own cameras. Like I said before, you know, no, there's someone coming. Turn off the camera. Turn it off. Turn it off. In preparation for the show, I was plastered with makeup, but even that we weren't allowed to film. I never wear makeup, so it's new to me. Really? Yeah. No good? Okay, thank you. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi again. Welcome. But when I did finally get on set, there were only dudes, no kittens to be seen. Efendim, merak ettiğiniz, konuşmak istediğiniz konular varsa hemen başlayabiliriz. Okay, so uh, I came here because I'm making um, a TV program about women in Islam. I've noticed that we said in Turkey when we come here, it's very distinct because there are people who are covered and there are people who are not. Um, does he believe that women should be covered? Yani çok olağanüstü şartlar varsa, kadınlar rahatsız ediliyorsa, tabii ki kadın kendini korumak için kapanması gerekir. Cenab-ı Allah bu konuyu net bir hüküm olarak açıklıyor. Yani cinsel organları, göğüsleri kapalı olmak şartıyla gayet rahat bir kıyafetle gezebilirler. So this means like a bikini for instance they can wear? Tabii ki. So uh, there are many women that work on the A9 channel. Are they here tonight? Evet, demin geldiler. Alkışlarla sizi isterseniz içeri alın. They're leaving? Yeah, the uh, ladies side. Hanımlar okay. geliyor, ladies side coming. Şimdi bu güzel hanımla konuşmalarımıza devam edelim. 
So I talk to Abu actually a lot about what women in Islam represent, and so um, I wanted to ask some of the women here how they feel about misrepresentations of women, Muslim women in media and things like this. Geleneksi İslam'da kadın tehlikeli bir varlık olarak görülüyor. Yani yüzlerce tedbir var. Bir kere erkeklerin içine çıkamaması var. Çıkmaz diye biliniyor. O oradan, konu oradan bitiyor. İkincisi çıksa bile tamamen kapalı olarak çıkması gerekiyor. Ee, kapalı çıksa bile konuşmaması gerekiyor. Konuşursa kaba konuşması gerekiyor. Buyur. Ee, yani kadının potansiyel böyle suç makinesi gibi görülmesi gelenekçi Ortodoks İslam'ın en acımasız yönlerinden bir tanesi. Yani bu bir hakarettir. I'm wondering if it's okay for me to ask um, one of the ladies if they can tell me their story a little bit. Is that okay? E, e, size e, acaba hanımlardan birisiyle onların hikayesini sormam uygun olur mu diye soruyor. Tabii ki. Of course. Yes. Sure? Okay. I don't know any one of you that wants to answer, but basically I was curious to know about how uh, your life changed once you started following um, uh, creationism and uh, became part of the A9 team. Actually, a lot of things change when I met him because, uh, for example, when you look at us, all of us, and yeah. I'm sure you also realize it from our side, uh, here women are always in front. Mm. We are not only equal, but we are always superior. So yeah. it's the best place for a woman to be in the world. Oh, great. So because, for example, uh, we have all you know, seen the West and yeah. how they treat women. Yes, there is equality, but for example, when you enter a room, yeah. uh, for example, in England, in America, there is no difference between a table and a woman in the room. But with him, for example, uh, when a woman walks in a room, it's like an extraordinary being walks mm. in a room. And he realizes every single detail. And you know, women can see a lot of details, and it's very important for a woman. For example, he realizes a very you know, little thing you change in your character, in your appearance, you did about yourself, and it's very no, it's very respectful. Mm -hmm. So we are being treated very respectfully, and it's the only place I can see in the world that this is being done in this level in the world right now. Is there a connection between the way that women are treated here and the creationism part of it? Of course, because you know he does it because he believes that God created women like this, and mm -hmm. he uh, emphasizes love and emphasizes that every single human being has a soul. This is why we are trying to make peace in the world, mm -hmm. not only against women but also uh, with men too. Mm -hmm. Because you know, for example, for a lot of people in the West, one person dying in the Middle East means nothing because they they see themselves superior mm -hmm. according to their race, racial mm -hmm. identity. And this also comes from Darwinism, because mm -hmm. Darwinism told people that there is something called race. Yeah. But in creationism, every single person who is created is equal. Yeah. That's why, of course, this is the most important part of it. Okay. Darwinism also eliminates women as well. Ah, how so? Yeah. Uh, Darwin himself says it. Yeah. yeah. He says it's uh, the woman is like a dog in the house, yeah. and something uh, is, can be played with. Mm. That's all. This position of being always superior and always in front is this something new that you got to experience once you started? It's new for everyone it? in the world. There yeah. is nowhere in the world that does this to yeah. any woman. Yeah. Uh, the top that you can get in the world mm -hmm. is woman being equal to man, mm -hmm. right? And especially, for example, in America, we know that many uh, female CEOs earn much less than men because mm -hmm. they think. They don't deserve it, yeah. basically. They, they think women are not superior, women, women are not equal. For me, uh, before I met Mr. Oktar, uh, I didn't know religion. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that I could leave religion and be free at the same time. 
But after I met him, I read his books. Uh, it opens my heart uh, to the truth. What's the best book that I should read if I'm trying to understand everything that you've written? Maybe uh, everything. everything. We cannot say one book because yeah. he has more than 300 books. Yeah. But uh, you have to read Atlas of Creation and Be Good Read the Dark Danger. Okay. Great. Yeah, I would love to see those. Okay. <laughs> Programa konusu açısından da ilk şehit bir kadın olması, ilk iman edenin bir kadın olması, ilk peygamberimizin imamlık yaptığı kişinin kadın olması, ilk vahiy kabul edenin kadın olması, peygamberimiz peygamberimizin peygamberini ilk tasdik edenin kadın olması, kadının üstünlüğünü göstermek açısından yeterli değildir. Peki programımız bu kadar olsun şimdilik. Bu bölümü bu şekilde bitirelim. Biraz sonra yine sağlıklı sözlü muhabbetimize devam edelim. That was the weirdest thing I've ever gone through in my life. <laughs> it feels as like some, someone rubbed crayon all over my face. So I'm unsure as to how these women do this every single day. The makeup process was hidden from us. Their PR handler lady really didn't want anyone filming me getting my makeup done. On one hand, it's like they're trying to make these women look like real TV presenters, but then on the other hand, in the middle of while somebody's having a conversation about women and politics and Islam, their leader starts playing Sia and like weird top 40 remixes and everyone has to start dancing in their chairs. <laughs> Maybe the most illuminating part of it was when I asked the women in the audience, who by the way, weren't speaking until I directly asked if I could speak to them, uh, how this changed their lives. And they all basically told me that they learned that they could be free even while being religious. Are they having better lives than they did before? What were their lives before? No one even wanted to talk about it. And at the end of it, I received this ginormous, like, 15-pound book about creationism that's full of obviously fake fossils. I mean, I thought that I would once I would meet them, I would understand a little bit more, but I'm even more confused about everything once I've left. When I came, I thought this was going to be a fun time, that this would be something that was light and bubbly and we would have, you know, a fun hangout session by the pool with these ladies. And by the time we show up, it turns into this dark, kind of scary, uneasy situation where it's as if you walked into a reality show that's actually a prison. And instead of having any sort of resolve, we're left kind of empty-handed with their bizarre footage. To the outside world, their lives seem like a joke. They seem like something that's an embarrassment or they're for spectacle. But in reality, these are real, these are real people and their lives seem to amount to some sort of spectacle for one man and that's their cult leader, Adnan Oktar. 